The King of Soul, Samuel Dale Cook, was born on January 22, 1931 in Clarksdale, Mississippi and grew up in Chicago. One of eight sons of a Baptist minister, Cook began singing gospel music with his siblings in a group called The Singing Children when he was six years old. At 15, Cook joined the legendary gospel group The Soul Stirrers and became their lead vocalist in 1950. The group's first recording with Cook on lead was Jesus Gave Me Water in 1951. In 1956, Cook recorded his first pop song, Lovable, as Dale Cook, choosing the pseudonym so as not to alienate his gospel fan base. Candy sweet and honey too There's not another quiet Quiet as sweet as you. I know, I know, I know, I know I'll always love you. However, his distinctive vocals were easily recognized, and he was dropped by the Soul Stirrers record label. Undeterred, Cook released the self penned You Send Me the following year. The song quickly shot to number one on Billboard's R&B charts before hitting the same spot on the pop charts. It would go on to sell 1.7 million records. I'd made any popular tunes. You hadn't made any popular songs, but you had been working in another field, had you? That's not? right. I was doing spirituals at the time, Dick. All right. What caused you at that point in your career of 57 to turn to this kind of singing? My economic situation. <laughs> <laughs> In 1960, Cook signed on with RCA Records and released the number two hit, Chain Game. Of the men working on the chain game. That's the sound of the it was the first in over 29 top 40 hits that he would place on the charts, with songs such as Where the people are so gay, twisting the night away Here they have a lot of fun, oh, I'm in a sad And the amazing Bring It On Home To Me. If you ever change your mind Go about leaving, leaving me behind Well, bring it to me, bring your sweet love During this decade, Cook, a savvy businessman, also started his own record label, publishing company, and management firm. On December 11th, 1964, Cook, a handsome ladies' man, met a woman named Lisa Boyer at a bar. He would later turn up dead at the Hacienda Motel. He was only 33 years old. The manager shot the partially clothed Cook, claiming self-defense. Did you know you struck Mr. Cook? Yes, because he said, later you shot me. He wasn't too far. He was at close range. Boyer would claim that Cook took her to the cheap motel, causing her to run off with most of his clothes. While the death was ruled a justifiable homicide, and the manager would win $30,000 in a civil suit against Cook's estate, there are many inconsistencies in both women's stories, and many believe that they had conspired to rob and kill Cook, who had been seen with wads of cash earlier that day. Cook left behind a wife, with whom he had three children, as well as three other children, who had been born out of wedlock. The first funeral service for Cook was held in Chicago. 200,000 fans lined up for more than four city blocks to view his body. The second service was in Los Angeles, where Ray Charles sang, Angels Keep Watching Over Me. Cook was buried in Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Glendale, California. After his death, his label released Cook's A Change Is Gonna Come, which would become the anthem for social change and civil rights. Sam Cook was one of the first inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. I say, you know, as a singer grows older, his conception goes a little deeper. If a singer uh, 
tries to find out what's happening in life, it gives him a better insight on telling the story of the song he's trying to sing. Sam Cooke was a visionary artist and a monumental talent who, though taken way too soon and very tragically, managed to leave behind a catalog of songs that defined a generation. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to like the video below.